Good evening, everyone. Have your attention. My name is Sid Gistler. I'm the administrator of the uh, Pulitzer Prizes, and I want to welcome you on behalf of the uh, Pulitzer Prize Board and the uh, Journalism School. Uh, each year, Pulitzer Prizes in journalism uh, stir excitement around the world. Newsrooms cheer, proud grandmothers weep, champagne flows. Tonight, however, we're going to look deeply at the work itself. Tonight, we're going to explore how journalists won Pulitzers by holding up the mirror to society, thereby bringing grave issues to public attention. And as you listen, remember to ask yourself, if we did not have such journalists, who would be doing this vital work? Our panel is superb. Starting on uh, your left, uh, on my left, I should say, and moving across the platform, we begin with our moderator, Sheila Cornell, director of the J School's Stabile Center for Investigative Journalism, and my partner in organizing the program. An outstanding investigative journalist, she began her career in the Philippines in 1982, and won renown with uh, the coverage of human rights abuses that marked the end of the Marcos regime. In 1989, she founded the Philippine Center for Investigative Journalism to promote investigative reporting and to train journalists. The center became a highly trusted news source in the region, reporting on poverty, corruption, and other shenanigans. Put it this way, if you did something wrong, you would not want Sheila on your trail. In 2006, she came to the United States to join our faculty and become the inaugural head of the Stabile Center. A graduate of the University of the Philippines and the London School of Economics, Sheila is author uh, or editor of more than 12 books and the recipient of numerous, numerous awards, including the highest honor paid to a Columbia professor, the Presidential Teaching Award in 2011. Next to Sheila, Susan Schneider and Mike Leary, representing the Philadelphia Inquirer, winner of the Public Service Prize with, uh, with its iconic gold medal displayed up there. In winning the prize, they held up the mirror to violence in the public schools. Susan has covered education for the Inquirer since she joined the paper in 1998. She was uh, co-lead reporter for the team that investigated school violence. In addition to the Pulitzer, that work won other top awards around the country. Today, she is uh, on the high, higher education beat at the Inquirer. She's a graduate of Indiana University of Pennsylvania she previously covered education at the Morning Call in Allentown. In her career, she's won numerous regional, state, and national reporting awards. Mike Leary, on Susan's left, knows his way around the newsroom. Today, he is the new editor of the San Antonio Express News. Congratulations. He took that post in August after spending 33 years at the Philadelphia Inquirer. Prior to leaving the paper, he edited the Pulitzer winning project we're examining tonight. At the Inquirer, Mike was a reporter for nearly two decades, including stints as a national correspondent and as a foreign correspondent covering the fall of communism in Eastern Europe. He also, said, uh, also has had various uh, editing responsibilities at the paper, including investigations editor and managing editor. Mike began his career working for his father's newspaper in Rice Lake, a weekly paper in Rice Lake, Wisconsin. And he is the first third generation graduate of our journalism school, class of 1972. His father and mother, class of 1947. His grandmother, class of 1917. And his grandfather, class of 1916, are all graduates. <laughs> wow, well done, Mike. <laughs> Next to Susan and Mike, we have Michael J. Behrens, an investigative reporter for the Seattle Times. In 2012, we gave two investigative reporting prizes. One went to Michael and Seattle Times colleague Ken Armstrong. They held up the mirror to deadly reliance on methadone for pain relief. Michael previously worked on the investigative team at the Chicago Tribune and at the Columbus Dispatch 
where he began at age 22 as a copy boy while attending Ohio State University. A finalist twice before in the Pulitzer competition, Michael is a highly decorated journalist. Name an award and he's probably won it. Selden Ring Award, Loeb Award for Business Reporting, National Press Club Award. He's won them all and the list goes on and on. Next to Michael, we have Craig F. Walker, a staff uh, uh, photojournalist at the Denver Post. Craig is a master of intimacy. That's why he won the Pulitzer Prize for Feature Photography in 2010 and again in 2012. This year, Craig held up the mirror to the invisible wounds of our veterans. Since 9-11, he has focused on the men, women, and children tangled in the continuing story of geopolitical conflict. He chronicled the aftermath of the collapse of the World Trade Center towers, the war in Afghanistan, and the deployment of American troops in Kuwait and later Iraq. In 2009, his photo essay about a young, baby-faced American soldier won the grand prize in Editor and Publisher's Photos of the Year competition. The next year, that essay won a Pulitzer. And he's compiled many other uh, honors, both national and international. Craig came to the Post in 1998 from the Berkshire Eagle in, Pennsylvania, uh, in uh, Pittsfield, uh, Massachusetts, I should say, where he chronicled the final six months in the life of a woman with AIDS, an early example of Craig's intimate storytelling with his camera. Next to Craig, Matt Apuzo and Eileen Sullivan, two Washington-based reporters for the Associated Press. They were part of the team that held up the mirror to uh, controversial spying tactics by the New York City Police Department. And they won the second Pulitzer awarded this year for investigative reporting. Matt Apuzo is a wide-ranging investigative reporter he has uncovered the location of CIA prisons and exposed how states use stimulus money to repave good bridges rather than fix bridges in disrepair. Before joining the investigative team, he was AP's legal affairs writer in Washington where he covered the trial of White House aide Scooter Libby. Earlier, he was part of the AP team in Connecticut that exposed corruption in state government. There's a pattern here, folks. He began his career as a reporter for the Standard Times in New Bedford, Mass, where he covered uh, corruption and organized crime in America's busiest fishing town. He's won or shared numerous awards, including a Polk Award and a Goldsmith Prize for investigative reporting. All in all, Matt says he's had more fun than he ever anticipated when it became clear he would never get into medical school. Eileen Sullivan, our last speaker on Matt's left, she seems like a fascinating character right out of the hit program Homeland. She covers counterterrorism for the AP and specializes in homegrown terrorism and domestic radicalization. She's covered every significant terror plot in the U.S. since September 11th. She previously covered the Department of Homeland Security for the AP and for Congressional Quarterly and the Federal Times. She too has shared uh, the Goldsmith and Polk Awards for investigative journalism. She began her career with the Courier Post in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, a graduate of Villanova in 99, uh, 1999 with a degree in English. She grew up in Alexandra, Alexandria, Virginia and lives in Washington, D.C. Now a quick word about our format with uh, interview style questions. <coughs> Sheila will guide the panelists through their stories, starting with the Philadelphia Inquirer. We will devote about 15 to 20 minutes uh, with uh, each segment. At the end of each segment, Sheila will turn to the audience for about five minutes of questions about that particular segment before moving on to the next uh, prize. So please be thinking of questions from the outset. Uh, after all four segments are finished, we will have a general round of questions. Now please use the microphones uh, that are in the two aisles, the ones nearest to you, uh, to ask your questions. We're making a video of the event, and we want to be sure that we capture your questions. Uh, anyone tweeting, uh, you'll see it's hashtag CJ Pulitzer. 
Now, Sheila, please take it away.